everybody, it's Angel and Eric here at Halo Inspirations. We give you inspirations to help you spread beauty and joy through your quilting journey. Happy hump day. Whoop, whoop. Happy Wednesday to you. So for those of you who don't know who this is, because it's been a while since he's been on camera with me, and I think he's only done it inside our private group of Creative Kingdom, and that was a long time ago. Uh, this here is our other half of Halo Inspirations, my awesome husband, and he is here to help with a, a project that is more up his alley than mine. Um, some of y'all have asked about my pressing mat, and this is the guy that got it done. So I've asked him to come along and show us exactly how he did this pressing board. Now this is a little bigger. This is a size that he ended up making for me, which is a great size, and we'll talk more about that. But he's got, I'm gonna hand this over to him and just ask questions if need be, but I'm gonna let him get started by telling what those supplies are that he uses, because just like quilting, this kind of stuff, everybody has their own method. There's no right or wrong, it's just whatever you think works for your brain and how you like to get it done. So he's gonna share his method on getting that pack, uh, pressing mat done and the supplies you're going to start with so it's all yours buddy all right all right so first thing plywood you can get quarter inch plywood you can buy a little three by four sheets or something along two by four sheets uh, at Lowe's probably for ten dollars um, I typically make stuff out of scraps but I went and verified you can get this there so you do scraps most of my stuff is from leftovers from other things. So just like we use in quilting, you're you're scrapping yes. it up. <laughs> yes, this was actually a larger board that's been cut down, but you can buy dowels, square dowels that are like three quarter by three quarter, one inch by one inch um, to make this out of. So how many of those do you need? So I'll show. Okay. So for this, we cut this board down to 12 by 14. So that's our size for where we're going to do our mat. Then what I did was I cut two pieces the entire length. So those are both 12, 15 inches. And, and then the inside edge here, you want to cut two more pieces. And they go in here. And I, I'll share a picture here at some point of exactly, because I know you can't see down on this table. So I'll take a picture of this at some point and I'll throw it up here for you guys. And he shows it to you finished. But how did you get there? So once I, I laid them out and I nail from the top side, I use a nail gun, but you can take small nails and tack them in. Just make sure your nails are not longer than both, pe both pieces of wood. So, so this isn't glued or nothing. You just set it right. You can put a bead of glue underneath if you want. It but gives you don't a little need to. more, but you don't have to. This is not taking a beading really, so it's it's pretty stable, um, and this size is pretty small and and reasonable. So with that, so this is your bottom. This is your top of that. So once you've built the frame out of all your pieces, so this is for an ironing board. I you can pick it up. I don't know when or where I've got this, Joanne's. but I, I probably got it at Joanne's a long time it. ago. Yeah. It, they still have it. Okay. You can find it at Joanne's. Now, what, what I wanted you to notice is that his, you can buy just the silver ironing board fabric, and some people will use that for these, but then they add batting. This already has the batting quilted on there, so it's like one less step, right? So he bought the stuff with the ironing board material, this metallic heat material that already has the batting quilted on it. And they sell it like that. So you're doing a little bit more in the fat quarter because you want to make sure that it folds over every edge. Yeah. And I'll take a picture of this too, I promise, and throw it up here because I know it's hard for you guys to see. So this, <clears throat> basically you want it to roll around and cover the inside edge. The reason I do it this way is because now I can turn this up and I can staple this in. He's going to use a staple gun. Since I have it. Do you want me to hold something? Sure, hold that up right there. Just It'll get a little loud. I'm not going to talk so I can mute the sound. Okay. 
So all I did was put three staples in that to tack it down. And I'm caught. <laughs> it's the lovely it's the lovely <laughs> land of having a microphone. So and then we want to pull it. We don't want to like yank it really hard, but just enough so that it's taut. Taut across here. So you're doing the short edges first. Would it have mattered if you did the it short? It doesn't matter which way you do this. Um, and then with this one, once you're in here, you can actually just pull it down. So now we've got these three, you know, these two sides for this, because if you start folding this all over, you get bulky edges. So come somewhere in here close. Doesn't have to be perfect. This is not going to show to anybody. Nobody cares what it looks like. We're just trimming it down. And again, I will take a picture of what that looks like. And that way you can see, not while he's doing it, but at least where the end result is. So, usually cut so you have, kind of at an angle in through here. That uh, gives you a nice way to be able to fold that. So then we'll do it over here. I need new scissors. Y'all tell him I need new scissors. trimming away and in fact with this if you have enough you can trim this away here the bulk the, the extra bulk, bulk of the after the um, staplers yeah where it's folded inside you can actually cut it away with a, a razor blade as well if you want to <laughs> said scissors yeah so here he's folding it like a present yep he's so. just gonna pull it taut again so Just it looks getting like it, getting it around the edges. So usually if you get one in a corner, and you can do one over here. We want to, I'm trying to cut out most of the bulk. So that's why I'm pulling it around and trying to get that out. So here, even though this side's longer right now, I'm only putting one in because there's going to be more staples when I put the fabric on. So one in the middle. So total of three again. Yeah. One on each so side. Just one, two, three right through here on each one as you're doing this. So then again, I'll hold this one up. So here, if we just fold that in like you're wrapping a gift, and then you can kind of push that down and see nice and taut across the top. For here, you can put it against yourself or you can flip it up. That's another, that's one of the reasons I put these lips on here because I don't have to worry about pushing staples through a thin piece of plywood, uh, but I don't have to worry about the bulk and the weight of a larger, thicker piece of plywood. So with that, one more here, and there we go. So here, this is just the ironing pad with the batting batting ironing batting applied I guess <laughs> <Yeah>. <clears throat> so I've done for this size you said how big did you cut this 12 by 15 mm -hmm. I'm using a fat quarter um, to for a decorative purpose I gave him one of my fat quarters that I thought would be really cute for the outside for the larger one, I did boutiques because I don't like boutiques. And I thought, what a great way to get rid of it. Um, and it works great. But he's using a fat quarter size of fabric for this smaller one. So this, typically, you want to at least run it down to the bottom, right where the, the two boards would meet. Uh, so as long as it meets there. You're not flat, huh? Is that no, okay? I'm not worried about that side okay. yet because I'm going to pull. Okay. So with this... Once again, it's actually, for me, I find it easier. Let me double check myself. Because here's another problem. If you don't put this center, um, you could end up not having enough one way or the other. So make sure your sides all match. There we go. So it gets all the way around. Now, what I'll do is just to make it easy, we'll get one right here and one here. 
And my staple didn't go all the way in because I pulled the staple gun back, so. All right, so now this is what we're looking at. So this one, I try and pull evenly. See how we have a, a bubble wrinkle across there? Kind of, kind of work that out. All right, nothing there. So now at this point, I want to keep hold of this so that I don't, you know, lose what I just went through to get that there. And if I push the staple gun, that should keep that taut across here. All right, so now we'll go over here. It was looking good before. Still looks good now. So I just did a couple uh, because we're gonna we'll go back and add some more uh, at the end here. Another time for because we're gonna have bulk again. So if you cut, it's almost a, a 60 degree angle through here. Uh, makes it easier on all of these. So once again, we're gonna cut down here, and these scissors are chewing up the fabric. <laughs> I don't I need new scissors. <laughs> Alright, so we're not too worried. We've got a little bit of bulk, but not much. Now I tend to try and make it pretty. So here. Got a nice corner there. And you're just still folding it like a present. Just folding it like a present. So this side here. And one of the things with this, with the staple gun, if you're pulling, and even if you do it upside down and you push down a little bit, you can actually pull on the fabric a little bit more. So if you need to pull on it, you want to do that. You can also pull in a section and pull really tight. So just be careful what you're doing with that. So now this is our final one. So I want to make sure that my corners are folded again a little bit. Then we're going to go over. So this one is just barely long enough on a fat corner, but it is long enough. So if I can get this, uh, everything working together here. Oh, it is barely where yep. you, got, you went further on this side. So we could have made it more centered, but that's okay. You'll get it done, right? Yeah, this is, I mean, this is plenty. I just need to finagle it slightly because here's the other thing. I don't want to, I, I try and leave everything so that it looks pretty. So it's not a big deal on this because it's the bottom. Uh, but and once you have it, once again, if we use a staple gun, it will actually pull and help you pull on that. So then let's go here. And this one can fold over a little bit. So here, and I'm trying to do this left-handed because it's going to be easier. Now, if you had more fabric would make this just a little bit easier to do but it can all be done and uh, to be real honest sometimes something like this would be easier just to tack with some hand tacks with a hand with tacks and a hammer yep you know depending on what kind of space you have here but again it doesn't have to be pretty the way he does this because he'll hide it. Check that. Okay. Just looking at the front, making sure that I didn't pull something I didn't want to. Need one more. Okay. So I'm going to go around. I'm going to hit a couple more just to. Make sure this thing isn't going anywhere. All right, so not perfectly pretty, but you could leave this 
because it is 12 by 15 so the amount of pressure you're going to put on here is not going to warp this board and i don't use steam so. right but 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 pressing sometimes if you're pushing on a larger board you have more space so you, it's going to so then if you want to finish this off this board now it's a little big on this one right this second so we trim it just slightly but when you the inside dimensions is what you measure and you can cut this board to that inside dimensions when you're you know from before the fabric is on there once the fabric is on there it should be really tight okay this one uh, when I was cutting I made a sixteenth of an inch difference which I should have done I realized so basically that will pop down inside so with that this is what it looks like so this one I didn't even tack this in you just I just it. pushed it down in here I pushed it down in I tacked this to it first so what I did was I all by itself tack these together the extra um, so that I can if, if they're because this is really short and you can bend the nails over so two things I want to show you this one the lip is a lot shorter so this piece and this piece together make this flush I'll make sure to show a picture here so what that does with this flush with the same here that so when you put it on something that's pushing on the table as well it doesn't allow this to bend in the middle for a larger one um, it's advisable to have something like that this one doesn't need it um, but because of the boards I used in all reality I would use two and if you can see approximately with this piece and these two we'll make it about flush and I will show a picture here for that too because I know it's hard for y'all to see it'll make sense better when they can see it closer correct and so if you nail this together or not you don't even have to like I said we don't even have to put this in here on this one so because it is the, this 12 by 15 but you want to clean it up make it look nice uh, I need like I said I, I did this incorrectly at the beginning I needed to take another 16th off and then all you do is at that point you can actually tap it in there you know use your knuckle use a little hammer and tap it down in there and I can cut and show that if you want okay but that's what it looks like even without that no one sees the bottom most of the time but what this does it gives you a nice clean surface not going to scratch anything no matter where your staples are they're not rubbing on a table they're not tearing them up whereas if you just did a flat board you're going to have staples on the bottom you have to figure out a way to cover them for me this was the easy button and that's it it is easy and i will tell you and some quilters will also agree if you put a thicker batting in here it'll make it really uh kind of gushy and when you go to press those pretty blocks that you made and you want them nice and flat and you don't want to distort them if they're kind of gushy and you've got a lot of padding here uh it's it has a high chance of really distorting your quilt blocks so having a little bit of padding is fine but you don't do anything really thick and the way his are made they are nice because I have enough that it's really substantial and hard with you know with just that little bit of batting and that little bit of heat resistant with that um, ironing board stuff <laughs> I don't want material right mm. so this is beautiful it's absolutely beautiful and the smaller one is good because this is very lightweight so you'll be able to take it with you if you go on retreat if you go to another room and you just have a little ironing board set up if you have a small cutting board you can put it on top something that i do though i know you have something else to add yeah so okay. one thing another thing about the 12 inches that's typically your standard ironing board so you can set this right on top of an ironing board as well and give yourself a nice solid place that's beautiful <laughs> <laughs> high five all right the other thing i like to do i was going to talk about the um alpaca um 100 alpaca mat that i have um we call it the paca mat and it's like wool but 
it's alpaca fiber 100 alpaca fiber we do have a few of these in the shop i was going to talk about it and i don't sell one quite this big right now but it goes on top of my big one what i'm going to do is definitely share a, a shorter video related to the alpaca 100 alpaca fiber mat what again pack a mat we call them pack a mats um and give you more detail on why you would want to use an alpaca fiber mat um, to do all your quilting but or sewing to be real honest with you but in the meantime i got another i got another one guys and i'm going to get another one because i got to take pictures for you guys to put it in this video so i'm going to have three <laughs> i love pressing boards and as a quilter it's really nice especially these smaller ones too he did say it does fit on an ironing board which i think is amazing because mine's a little big and sometimes i put it on there and you know it's big this is really cool idea but the other thing too if you have a sewing table or, or a small table next to you you'll be able to put it on there and have something just for small parts uh, right there by you don't have to like get up and walk to your ironing board or to a, or a larger station so i like this small size yeah and it's it's a good size I, I did the 15 to give you a little bit more length so you have an oblong you can do a 12 by 12 so you have a square it gives you even you know a few more inches shorter mm -hmm. Um, so just another thing that I didn't talk about. So when I did this one, I actually offset these in. Mm. So you have to do more math, figure it all out. Yeah, nobody wants to do that. No, more but math. this is the easy button is <laughs> if you're if you're doing it all the way around the edge. But if you make it slightly smaller, the, the, you, you the get box. that yeah, you, the box, you get a little angle on your your mat. Mm. Not a big deal. It I, just I like this one. Yep. <laughs> and it is lightweight. Which is always good. Yeah, so. and that's what the, the quarter inch, you know, and that's why also though, even when it gets bigger, putting a little bit more in there to, to, to keep it from bowing. But the small ones, they're small enough on that quarter inch, very lightweight, and you can really push on that and you're not going to warp this board. Well, thank you. Mm -hmm. I appreciate you stopping by. Yeah, I hope that, you know, if, if someone wants to make it, it should be fairly simple to do. And you can have your quarter inch plywood cut at the place you buy your board they will cut them to size for you I know a lot of people who've had it done uh, you might have to buy the whole board sometimes I have seen they have some ways so it, I guess it depends on the store whether or not they'll cut a piece down and you won't have to buy the, I don't know usually you have to buy the whole piece of plywood and then have them cut it down well, for you the, but the quarter inch like I said you can get it in a, a two foot by four foot piece Okay. for ten dollars it's a two foot by four foot section okay um in the back of the store cool that's really nice yeah cool two by four two feet by four foot mm -hmm. quarter so, inch plywood yeah so essentially you could you know you could make eight of them if you really wanted to right they'd be just just under 12 inches for each one 12 by 12. okay cool yeah. all right well i appreciate it if anybody has any questions please don't hesitate to drop them down below in the comments um darn it I just thought of something. <laughs> I am always live on Facebook at 3 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time as we are here in Virginia to have a live quilting and answer session for any comments, suggestions, questions that you may um, have. You'll be out of town, so you will not be able to join me for that live event. Probably not. Nope. <laughs> we are in two different states on Wednesday, but... Feel free to show up on uh, the live Q&A session, and um, if there's not something I can answer for you, I will definitely take notes and get them done. But in the meantime, if, if you feel more comfortable dropping in the comments here, I'll make sure to tell them to read it and reply um, for us. Uh, any, any answers, you'd be okay with that? I'm, yeah, I'm fine with that. Okay. I'll try and join. I don't know. It depends it, on when things happen. Yeah, well, we'd have to Zoom it. Yeah. Yeah. At any rate... Uh, at any, uh, that, that is it for today. That is my, um, awesome husband's, uh, pressing board, which is one of my faves. Um, that one of the things that I use all the time that he's made for me. Um, and that's, that's as easy as it gets. It is a, it is the easy button. It's like, booyah. There it is. <laughs> but at any rate, thank you all for stopping by. I hope this was helpful and I hope to see you at 3 p.m. But until next time, guys, may you all continue to be inspired, productive, 
ever so joyful. Never stop believing and never stop making your dreams and quilting come true. I love y'all. Happy quilting.